What up everyone? Today I've got a pretty special manga spotlight to go through and I have sort of hinted at this on my Instagram channel but this here was a pickup from Sean at Japan Book Hunter and it is the Gendai Comics collection, the avant-garde collection that I've been uh, sort of losing my mind over for the past couple of weeks or so so the full title of this is the Gendai Manga Second Season. It's the second season up here. Gendai meaning contemporary. Uh, Avant-garde manga masterpiece published by Chikuma Shobo. So it came here in this box. And here's a list of all the artists and mangaka that are in here. And here is the actual book. Big, big book. A collection of so many different works from so many authors, writers, illustrators, graphic designers, etc, etc. So, I had to do some research for some of these uh, mangaka and the people inside here because some of them I've actually never even heard of before. So, it's going to be quite a long video. It's either going to be split up into two parts or just a really long video. I've got notes beside me because I don't remember, I can't remember everything. So, uh, there are, there will be a lot of uh, sections where I'm just talking about the mangaka if I have found any information but let's just get right into it so a very big book hopefully let me just reposition okay here we go so avant-garde masterpiece collection and by the way um, Chikma Shobo have also made their own uh, this is the second season dubbed the second season so there are other collections I know there are are collections for pre-war manga um, and specific manga as well like Mizuki Shigeru, Tsuge Yoshiharu has his own one, there's um, one for Takeda Yu as well uh, but this one was definitely the one that was in all to me probably the most demand it's always sold out just because of how many uh, insane artists are in here so we start off this book with um, the table of contents so I will now list off, I'll just say now what the, um, how many people are in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13 people, right? And so let's just get into it because the first thing is really cool. We have like a color gallery, a color illustration gallery of a couple of different artists in here. So I'm going to flick through all this page by page. So feel free to stop um, and pause. So this first one on the right is by Akasegawa Genpei. And uh, because a lot of these artists, you know, they only have a couple of pages, sometimes maybe 10, 20 pages in this book. I will try to um, bring out any books I have of the actual manga or artists to showcase, you know, just give some context as to uh, what uh, stuff they do outside of this. So this right one here is, is by Akasegawa Genpei. So I'll go through it after the color works. The second over here is by Ryuzan Aki. And it is a little whimsical piece. Sort of a gag piece. And these two here are by Yosuke Inoue, very dark art. Love it when uh, he has color, he puts color into his artwork. Also by Yosuke Inoue. And on the left, this person I've never heard of before, but their name is Umeda Hidetoshi. They got one here, it's very interesting. It's like the body, someone's body being sewn to the ocean these two are also by Umeda Hidetoshi I love this one it's like I love the uh, sort of manipulation of the body there great stuff yeah I've never heard of this uh, artist before and then now we move on to Another artist that I've never heard of till this point, Okamoto Shinjiro, who does this sort of 
this weird amalgamation, weird creatures, different insects. This is also by Okamoto. And then you have the iconic Toshio Saiki, of course. And these two are by Sasaki Maki, famed nonsense manga cut. And these two here are by another artist that I didn't know until this point, Cho Shinta. Cho Shinta. Interesting. I, I do think he does picture books as well. On the right hand side, oh, let me just zoom in actually. Yeah, that's a bit better. Right hand side, you have Hiroshi Nakamura. And then on the left, a couple of pages from Hayashi Seichi. He's combining like photography with his illustrations. Great stuff by Hayashi, as usual. And then the last remaining couple of illustrations are by Taranori Yoko, very popular graphic designer, illustrator. And this one is also by Taranori Yoko. All right. So let's get straight into the first set of stories here. This is by Akasegawa Genpei. So what I will do is I'm just going to, because I do want to talk a little bit about who they are. I'll be right back with uh, the actual story itself. But to give some context about Akasegawa, so I have shown this book uh, on the channel before, but we will come back to the Genlo because there are some things I want to talk about in terms of his life. So Akasegawa Genpei, I do have notes here, I'm just reading off them. Just to give some context, this, the, the, I'll be just randomly flicking through this while I talk. But if you do want to find more information, there is surprisingly a lot of, uh, from, uh, sorry, about Akasegawa. So I only just have a brief summary of his, uh, his life and just to give some context for this video, but he was born in 1937 and he had passed away in 2014. So he's a writer, he's a photographer, he is uh, an avant-garde artist, um, and he made manga as well, a lot of essay writing too. And he was most well known for this one incident. There's this one incident that we'll talk about later, but he was a part of two groups, the Neo Dada organizers that was formed in 1960 and they were mainly involved in, in like anti-art public and uh, visual performance art uh, and of course some of them were related to the Ampo protests and he on top of that was a part of another group the high red center that was formed in 1963 and i believe it only lasted for about a year um and it was based on like a similar sort of thing, anti-art, public, uh, or like a public art collective. There were two other people in that group. But the most interesting thing that I found about him was something called the Model 1000 Yen Note Incident. So essentially what had happened was a High Red Center's first gallery exhibition. It was called the Fifth Mixer Plan. Not sure what that means. They sent out their invitations to the exhibition as in the form of sort of fake money. So fake 1000 yen notes, but they weren't actually money. They just had the picture of uh, the front of the note. And on the back, it was an invitation to the actual gallery itself. So it was just like a little postcard. But the thing was, um, there was a raid happening by police on someone else. And they discovered one of these notes uh and pretty much convicted Akasegawa and because these notes were only sent to friends right because they were just to the exhibition technically Akasegawa shouldn't have been convicted but at that time uh their group the high red center was deemed as ideologically perverse by the government and the police so they were taken in anyways 
And uh, what had happened was that the media jumped onto this. There was a previous incident called the Chi 37 incident where uh, gen uh, counterfeit money was uh, introduced into circulation. It was a really big thing. And the media sort of exploited that and linked Akasegawa to that scandal, which he was obviously not involved in. Um, but there was a court case that stemmed from that. So I think it started in 1963, or was it 66? And it went until 1970. And essentially, there were two questions. Were the notes, the fake notes that Akasegawa made, were they art, number one? And number two, were they protected under free expression? So those were the, the main points that were argued in that court case. And when it came to witnesses and uh, debating whether his notes were art, it became like a lot of the witnesses were his friends or other artists. And the courtroom sort of became a, a little art exhibition, which I think was really cool because it was about... Uh, arguing whether his notes were art, what was art, or what could be deemed art, or was free expression, that sort of stuff. And uh, apparently there were pictures of these, so a photographer took pictures of these, so you might be able to find that if you searched it up. Um, and what had happened was that in 1970, the court case ended with Akasegawa's notes. They were deemed art, but at the same time, he was still convicted for producing it. So he got a light suspended three months sentence from that. But six months after that case, uh, after it was released, um, he did a very funny jab and produced some zero yen notes that could be exchanged for 300 yen. So as a, as a legal jab at the sort of police for convicting him uh, for that case. And that was probably the, the main thing that interested me about his career really interesting especially the part where the court case turned into a little art exhibition of all these artists and uh, illustrators arguing what was art that would have been very very interesting to see um and other than that akasegawa was he received the akutagawa prize in 1981 for his short story chichi ga kieta which means my father has disappeared let me just flick over my notes a little bit. And yeah, so that was a little bit of background info on Akasegawa while I was flicking through this. I have shown this book before, but not in that much depth yet. I haven't read this yet either, but categorize or oh, his signature style in manga at least. Big panels with a lot of text. So now I'm going to go back to the Gendai manga. And we'll take a look at what stories are in here. So, his works are very uh, political, of course, and the, the sort of speech and the dialogue, or the text, sorry, used is a bit complicated. So, I'm going to say that I didn't really fully understand a lot of what was going on, but that didn't dim my enjoyment because his art is amazing. So, here we've got a couple of different works by him. The first one is translated to Modern Helmet Thoughts. And what I could grasp from it was the text was saying something about um, a helmet fusing into the head. So I believe it's probably like a allegory for something or a metaphor for something. So this first one is of like a helmet fusing into the head. This second one was something about um, like gel or something acting as a helmet and its ability to keep this thing in like with centrifugal force i don't know it, it was really hard to understand so i don't think i i could sort of grasp much of it but it's still cool third one was something about uh bureaucrats being entirely made of stone probably a political jab and the fourth one is supposed to be a combination of all of them so yeah, I can't really say much on what it's about, but definitely politically uh, related. So this second story here is called Thoughts on Contemporary Matters, and I believe there are just some notes related to the model 1000 yen incident. So here we've got these two pages here. 
so cool. And here you go, more notes about the 1000 yen note incident. Third story, it's called um, Thoughts on Modern Life Slogans. So I believe they are in each of these um, little text boxes there, the slogans or the sayings and some uh, illustrations to accompany it, probably satirical. Not too entirely sure. And it continues over here. Fourth one. Thoughts on modern boredom. It's about these two horses here. One is like picking its nose. And it's some something to do with some more commentary focused on picking noses and boredom. It continues over here. And the last story is called Hanasaka Jiji, which is based on uh, another, a, a Japanese sort of folktale. Um, so I'll just quickly explain what the folktale is. Pretty much uh, a couple, an old couple here, the, the Yoi Oji-san. The, so Yoi Oji-san means like the, the good uncle and or old man. And then the Warui Oji-san means the bad old man. And here's the dog, uh, Inu. So pretty much, uh, the I'll explain the folk tale first. It was a it was like an old couple who had a dog, and uh, one day it dug in the garden, and it found some gold, uh, a box of gold coins, and so a neighbor, which is probably oh yeah, which is represented by the bad man, he sort of kidnaps and um, tries to get the same thing. Try to, tries to get gold from the dog digging, but when it doesn't work, he kills the dog. And so he tells the couple that, oh, the dog has died from something else, and they get really sad, so they bury him uh, in the yard. But in a dream, he, he, uh, the dog visits them and tells them, oh, chop down a tree, make a mortar out of it, and then once you do that, uh, put some rice into it, and it will turn into gold. They did that, it worked. And after that, the neighbor tried to do the same thing, borrowed uh, the mortar, but nothing happened, so he smashed it up and burned it. So, uh, next thing was that the dog told his master to take the ashes, sprinkle them on a tree, and when it did so, a very nice looking, um, I think it was a cherry blossom tree, bloomed, a feudal lord came over, saw it, it was beautiful, gave them gifts, the neighbor tried to do the same thing, but then the ashes instead went into the Lord's eyes and he was thrown in prison. So that was the original tale. So this is the adaptation of it by Akase Gogo. So we have this first panel here of them discovering the gold for the first time and the neighbor killing the dog after. And so it's pretty funny. I'm, I'm so captivated by the the design of the dog by the way it's i love that helmet on him and the facelessness of it so this character is death so it shows that he is dead i couldn't read this as well because all of it is in katakana so it doesn't really help with the translations um so the dog dies and they get the dream of making the mortar putting in rice and the gold comes out of it but when the old man, the, the neighbor, tries to do the same thing. It doesn't work, so he breaks it apart. And so they do the next thing where they go and sprinkle the ashes onto the cherry blossom tree, and it blooms, and the lord or the daimyo sees it. They get a lot of uh, expensive gifts and all that type of stuff. So it goes well for the old couple. And then this one, I couldn't really tell exactly what was going on, but I'm assuming it has to do with the neighbor's side where they try to do the same thing, and instead they get these retaliations. Interesting uh, imagery here. Coca-Cola, different bottles, brands falling down on them. And I guess ending off with maybe them getting arrested. And turns out to be like a dream or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, that is 
the last Akasegawa Genpei um, story in here. Very cool stuff, especially the illustrations. I love his illustrations so much. I uh, still haven't read his stuff yet, but eventually we'll get to it. So yeah, next thing here, we have our next manga, Ryuzan Aki. So Ryuzan Aki was born in 1942, and he fortunately passed away very recently. I didn't know this because I didn't know who he was back then. But uh, early 2023, he had passed away. So he's known for his nonsense manga, uh, his gag manga. His, they're very whimsical. And <clears throat> what I could find about him was that he used to work as a fisherman and then a post office clerk. And then he transitioned to becoming a manga fully in, I think, 1966. So this first one here, which is... Uh, I'm going to show this. These are the table of contents. Biography. From pages 61 to 75 are a collection of his, uh, some short works published in the weekly manga times. And all of them are sort of under the umbrella title of Yuzan Aki's Roaring Idiot. So here are some of these stories. A lot of gag stuff. I haven't come across his, I know he has put up, put up stuff in Garo. I haven't come across a lot of them yet. I think I've come across one or two. So these ones all are under Yuzan Aki's Roaring Idiot. There's some steaming piss, which is crazy. Got some calligraphy with the nose. Very weird stuff. And I believe, is it? No. Yeah. This one is titled, Oh No, Japan. I think they're saying something like, a foreigner should eat, eat how a foreigner should, and they switch it into using a knife and fork. It's some very, yeah, mainly gag, nonsense related stuff. Okay, and then on this left one here, I believe it translates to Yuzan Aki's, oh, Yuzan Aki's Playful World, something like that. And so they are sort of another collection of stories published in a different place. This one here titled O Jari's. I believe it is a full tankle bond, or maybe it's three tankle bonds. Hmm, not entirely sure, but I know the uh, All Jarry's is from a tankle bond series, and these are just a couple of shorts from it. I like this one. Sort of like shaking house. It's good because these are wordless as well. Some of this stuff is wordless, so you can pretty much understand just from looking at it what is going on. Some more stuff. It says Banzai. And that's the last of it. I think this one is called Eating Raw Rice, maybe? Yeah, this one's called Eating Raw Rice. And then we have an untitled work here. So that was Uzan Aki. Definitely a lot more stuff that I can discover from him and Gara. I just haven't seen him too much yet. But yeah, so if you like your whimsical stuff, I do believe he has a couple of tanker bonds as well. So you can probably find it somewhere. So the third artist that we have now is an artist I have showcased before in the weird and wild spotlight I did. This is Inoue Yosuke. Yosuke Inoue. All right, so beforehand, I'll just quickly flip through another book that I have of him just for some context from stuff. I do have two, but I'll just do this one really quickly. This is called Descent, um, a collection of his, a small collection of some of his sketches. Are these wood blocks? No, they not. I don't think they're wood blocks, but he pretty much does a, a lot of um, 
Dhaka Art. So he was born in 1931 and passed away in 2016. But uh, his daughter, I believe, is still running a Twitter account uh, for him. So I will put that in the description. So he made manga, illustrations, uh, oil paintings as well, and some picture books too. So I don't have any picture books yet. So I don't exactly know whether they're as dark as his art works, um, but eventually I will get one from him as well. And hopefully there is one really big your skin the book that I want. Hopefully I can get that soon. Fingers crossed because oh if I get that book I will definitely make a video on it. Because your skin away if you love darker art, um, then come for his stuff. And he also does some like nonsense, absurdist or surreal works as well. So here's the table of contents and the biography of it. So the first uh, short or, um, I think it's only one page, yeah, is titled One Road. So it's like two people colliding into each other and sort of confused. This second work is called Ore no Naka ni Onna, so a woman inside me. So this man here feels that there's a woman inside of him. So he takes his clothes off, tries to figure things out, but the woman becomes larger and larger until she actually takes over and he becomes her uh, private parts and he scares people off. Really weird work, but it's fun. This third one here is called Konyak no Furue. So a konyak like woman. So konyak is in like the vegetable thingy. So I guess it's just like a woman that's would be like that. Fourth, I've got something called Instant Excitement. I didn't really understand this one to be honest. It's a longer work. It's about, I guess, a woman that was pregnant giving birth to someone. This, by the way, is just his little sign or tag. It just says Yosuke, his name, first name. Yeah, I didn't really understand what was going on here, but I love the art, even though it's more simple compared to this other stuff. And then on the left, we've got a story called, well, I, th I guess a collection of works called Nonsense District. This one I loved a lot, especially this one. This one's so cool. It's like sort of grinding something through his ear. And then spitting like a piece of like a giant ball out. Another person appearing from their body. And then the last story we have is a longer one, more detailed. It's titled Subway Train. This one's a little, it's more dreamlike. Um, so essentially, what happens is a man tries to go into the subway but finds that the door is gone. And so he enters through a, uh, a manhole cover and he goes into the train. They give them ramen for some reason. And then when they go into the train, a lot of, uh, a lot of sex happens for some reason. Finally gets out of it. I really love this panel here as well, like the horizontal line. Gives it like a sort of a misty feel, even though I don't think it's mist. But he goes up, uh, tries to get out of the train station, but it's a very, very long staircase up. He meets random weird people walking down and finds himself coming outside through a dog kennel, which is weird. And this is what he sees, but when he tries to go back, he can't find the dog kennel anymore, but can only find a shovel shop. And so he starts digging down to try and get back to where he came from. I really love that story. That was really cool. Um, I'm, in terms of uh, his manga, there is one in his art book that I showed in the Weird and Wild video. But other than that, I haven't really seen too much of 
is manga. Um, it mm, can be hard to find, but I will definitely try to look for his art books in the future as well. Right, so this next one is this um, manga is his name is Umeda Hiretoshi. So this one, uh, this uh, person, I couldn't really find too much info on because I've never heard of him before. Um, but I do know he's born. He was born in 1945. I'm not sure if they are still alive at the moment. Uh, but we do have a couple of one-page shots from them. And all I know is that they graduated from Musashi no Oil, the oil painting department there. So, we, here is the first one titled Exile. It's following a guy that's sort of digging, like, the earth out. And living on this little, little prince-like planet. Second one here is titled Privacy, and it sort of uh, makes use of the space, the panel space. On the left, got a story titled Competitive Spirit, of so two people, I guess, trying to launch themselves higher. Here it says uh, pitiable, pitiable, pitiable people, I think. So, like, their heads are just going crazy, but the bodies do not care. They're chill. This one is just titled, I think, Transcendence. Yeah, Transcendence. Some guy on the left doing crazy formulas. The guy on the right doing the Heno Heno Moheji face, I think the name is. And then next... This is on this called a dictionary of modern terms. So this one is titled faction. The next one on the right is titled rejection reaction. And the one on the left is titled dictatorship. Dictatorship is definitely the easiest to understand. Number three. This one here is titled one sided. Looks to be like a horse. I thought it was a person at first, but a horse being pulled through a hole. The left is called This Depends on Practice. So a guy, I guess, can tie his shoes without moving his arm or his third arm or something like that. The fourth, well, not fourth, sorry. The next one is called It Comes Out. And this one on the left is called Real Ability. And oh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. And these two are together. This one's in together, they're called inside and outside. So this one's inside, uh, which is like some guy that's driving a person, and the person tries to get them out, but gets stabbed and betrayed pretty much. And this one's titled Outside, where the outside is too cramped, and so he shrinks, and he's all good. So just like a bending reality, that sort of thing. And this last cool illustration here is called, in other words, that is all that came out. I'm not exactly sure what they're squeezing, I think it's like a group of people. You can see the faces, and one single tear or blood, whatever you think it is. Yeah, that was Umeda Hidetoshi. Do not know anything about them, don't think they did any manga, probably just uh, illustrations. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool because this book gave me so much uh, to discover. Uh, even though I knew most of the artists already, even from the artists I knew, a lot of different works so great stuff here all right now we move on to the next manga car uh i think it's manga car. was it illustration oh more illustrations the manga car. their name is okamoto shinjiro they were born in 1930 and i couldn't really find too much information on them at all so we've got four works here 
Here's the short summary. So the first one is titled uh, Western Men and Others. Not sure what that means. This, these two um, pictures here combined together, it is titled Antenna Death. Really interesting. It's like a morphing insect. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. The third one is called the Pedestrian Bridge Dragon. Oh, the Pedestrian Bridge Dragon. Not sure what all this. Uh, oh, there, there's a cars. There's a cars. Yep. And this fourth one is called the Laughing Cat. Or Alice no Warai Neko. Alice's Laughing Cat. So, like the, what's the name of it? The Cheshire Cat in uh, Alice in Wonderland. That was cool. And then now we move on to the iconic Toshio Saeki, born in 1945 and unfortunately passed away in 2019. So, here's the summary. And the stuff in here, there are a couple of black and white illustrations. But before we get into that, um, Let's look at one of all. Well, I only have one Toshio Saeki work, and it is this one here. I will eventually do a video on some art book stuff that I have as well, but that is the Red Box reprint by Cornelius, French publishing or French publisher. And so, oh, this one's such a great book. A very simple design. A shiny silver cover. Here it is, Toshio Saiki Red Box. So the original Red Box in Japanese, the original one that was published, uh, those are extremely hard to find. And I will have to be careful because all of these here are color works. So I will have to be careful and be selective of which works I show. But Toshio Saiki, very well known for his erotic works, sort of combining Shunga and uh, yokai, like the Shunga style and yokai. Oh. Amazing stuff. His works in color are so insane and he's very in demand. So, if you want to try and find anything from him, uh, good luck. This is the only book I have from Saiki. And if you do find something from him, then it probably will be expensive. So, yeah, that's, um, that's why I only have one uh one book from him you can pause that if you want to read so let's see if i can find any other works that can be shown this one's cool a little guy picking out on the corner and i'll just show one more i really love the color uh schemes in his work but yeah this is an amazing book Red box. If you can find the original, even better. But this is the uh, the, the sort of reprint by Cornelius. Love, love his works. And so we'll move back to Gendai. We'll come back to his section, which, uh, yeah, a couple of black and white pieces. The usual stance of a, like a family photo. I love this one. Love that face there. Great stuff. Have to be careful. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine. This one's also all one of my favorites as well. Like a doll being stabbed. Oh, can I show this? Hmm. I guess I'll blur it out. All these weird grandmas in the background. And we've got this demon thing drilling into a wood plank above a girl. Crazy stuff. Everyone loves Toshio Saiki. So pick up his stuff if you can. And if it's uh, uh, not as expensive for you. All right. Next one. Sasaki Maki. Very well known. Or... I don't know if he's very well known, but for me, he's very iconic. 
uh, nonsense mangaka. And he was born in 1946. And I do believe he is still alive. So he's known for his uh, nonsense stuff. He's done picture books. Uh, his works are very absurd. Can be described as like anti-manga. And he also cited uh, one of his influences as um, uh, being Shigeru Sugira, who I think we are getting an English release from soon enough. I think it's Ninja Sarutobi, something like that. And he debuted in 1990, 1966 in Garu. And fun fact as well, he also illustrated some of Haruki Murakami's uh, novel covers. So this first story is called Machi no Uma, which means the town's horse. And can't really tell you what is happening here because if you know Sasaki, he's pretty, yeah, nonsense, nonsense manga. But his art style is amazing. I think this story is also in the uh, Umibe no Machi Tankobon from Sasaki, which collects just a bunch of his different stories that he's done in Garo. I'm not sure if he has done works in other magazines before, but it's definitely a lot of Garo stuff. Yeah, this is still that same story. This dog appears you know, in, his, in his works a lot. There is a picture book that follows that dog as well. And if you want to learn more about Sasaki, you can always read Ryan Holmberg's essay on him online. You just search it up. You know, Ryan Holmberg, Sasaki Maki. He's got a, a out of print at the moment. Hopefully there will be a reprint. Out of print uh, English release called Ding Dong Circus. Published by, I don't remember exactly who, but I don't have that at the moment, but hopefully it gets reprinted. So that was the town's horse. On the left, it's titled Independent Breastfeeding Method, which is, I don't know why it's called that. But on the next page, it's got a really cool double page here of like these milk bottles with different body parts, different people trapped in them like a tap for some reason i just love the detail it has worked so much and the last one is called the dog goes so this story or this couple pages was referenced um in ryan holbeck's essay he talks about he sort of deconstructs it so it is a bit confusing it's got like labels and stuff as well but check that essay out. It's online, I think, on the Comics Journal if you want to find more about these three pages here. Yeah, well, Sasaki Maki. Uh, I don't have any Tunkle Bonds from him at the moment. All I do have are of his content, just his uh, Garo stuff. So, for example, you know, this is a cover done by Sasaki Maki. Gaara 1972, he debuted in 1966. Weirdly enough, the cover is drawn by him, but uh, there are no Sasaki stories in here. So, yeah. But he has he has a lot of other stuff with uh, Garo, so at the moment, I just don't have any. Okay, so we are... What are we? Okay, we're halfway through the book. Still a lot of different artists to, to um, explore. This one is a new one for me. His name is Tatsumi... Shiro, born in 1983, am I getting that right, 1983, yeah, and uh, they are an illustrator, very cool illustrations, um, so I'll show, I'll hide this, very like deformed people, <laughs> very dark art, love the eyes, they're so big and the word direct in your face so this one's my favorite from the stuff we have try to find any info on you really couldn't don't think he has any books out or anything like that but this this illustration is crazy like an amalgamation of different bodies and the last one is this thing not sure what it is but you can see like people morphed into this one 
I'm guessing TV because of the cord and the screen. Could be a TV, not entirely sure, but sick stuff. Yeah, so like in this in this book, you can get like you know just a couple of pages of different things that you've never seen before from artists that you've never even heard of before. And when you when you try to go after them to to find them, you can't really find anything. So this is why this is such a treasured book for me because I. I love that sort of stuff. All right, on the left, we've got Tiger Tateshi. Very well known. And he's got uh, like a picture book uh, as well, published in English. His Tiger in the Land of Dreams picture book. But for now, I will show... Where is it? I have a book for him that I wanted to show. Give me a sec. Did I misplace it? should be here. It is the TRA book. I literally put it here just then. Um, oh, okay, I found it, found it. Here you go. T-R-A. I forgot what it stands for. What does it stand for? Oh. Here it is on the Taiga Tadeshi Super Multi Dimension. Very big work. I have, I think, two Taiga Tadeshi books. This one and his uh, Taiga in the Domain of Dreams. Oh, and Moon Tracks 3. Moon Tracks is the art book. So this one's really cool because it's just a gigantic book of so many of his works. Got like fold outs as well. Um, I will just flick through this. Yeah, a lot of short works, gag works, color works, everything. So he was born in 1941 and passed away in 1998. I'll just flick through this while I talk. Um, so he was painter, made manga, made picture books, also made ceramics, which I haven't seen yet, um, and did a lot of nonsense works, gag work, sci-fi works, a lot of his stuff, uh, especially in Moon Tracks, deals with like perspective as well. And his name comes from like his ti his actual name is not Tiger, but he was just born in the uh, the year of the Tiger. Loves to have a lot of motifs in his works, especially the tiger motif. And in Moon Tracks, the art book, he works with the motif of the moon and the moon metamorph uh, or like changing or transforming. And he had also moved to Milan in 1969 as well. And he's got a couple of different things published in English, I think it was by 50 Watts. One of them was the picture book, Tiger in the Land of Dreams. I think the, the other one is, what's the other one? Is there something new coming out? Oh, well, there was that little, something strips, like a couple of different strips of his works. Well, if you can find this one, please pick it up because this is value. Like such a big book with a lot of color works mixed in, there's so much variety in this book. So. Try to find this if you can. A great, great gold cover as well. So yeah, that's the big Tiger Tetsu book that I have. I haven't read it yet because it's so big. Uh, but let's get back into the stuff that we have here. So all of them are untitled, just a series of different uh, one sh like page works like um, different sequences the obstacle here quite funny as well quite humorous after the rain so feel free to pause it just to take a look that's everything that is happening this is called the tow boat sort of like messing with the the reality of the comic the horse and breaking through the water and rolling it up This one's really cool. It's like a reflection, two different realities. This is on the ocean, a sort of Pied Piper type thing that is being towed along, or is is connected to all these different fish and creatures. This one is called the Trouble, and it's like three. Kids growing carrots and doing other things, 
related to vegetables, I guess. And this last one, the, end, the Endless Tiger, a very iconic uh, image in his works. Sort of repeating. You see this a lot in uh, his picture book, The Tiger in the Land of Dreams. So also picked it up, I believe it is by 50 watts. And they, it is like, it's not too expensive as well. But yeah, that was Tiger Tateshi. Let's keep going. So on the left now, we've got Cho Shinta who is new to me as well. They were born in 1927 and passed away in 2005. And oh, by the way, I should, I should have done this at the very, very start. But um, this book was published in 1971. My bad, I should have did a start. 1971. Yeah, just to give a timeline of things. So Cho Shinta, uh, I think is mainly known for his children's picture books. That's the main thing. I don't think he's done any manga. This first one is called Farewell Woman. Some weird stuff. Oh, this is still Farewell Woman. On the right, this is called Phantom Thief Anzenshin Tango. So this is a man here in Argentina on the independence monument in Buenos Aires. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and they're about to stab someone to death with by throwing dango. So dango are those like Japanese sweets, those little round ball, uh, balls on a stick. And someone's about to die. That's, that's the title of that. Um, left hand is just called untitled. It's like numbers and days populating that and then here is a really weird one I don't, think I, I don't think I understood this much but um this is the weird uncle's fairy tale interview so these two pages here are about something like replacing chickens with robot chickens there's still the same interview this time about like isolation or community something like that and we've got like a this untitled work of a leaning building, that sort of thing. Weird stuff. Would be interested to see what sort of stuff he did in his um, picture books as well. And the last one is called About Madness. The so brain stuff leaking out. But yeah, that was Chuo Shinta. Interesting stuff. Never heard of uh, this person as well. Okay, so the next person, you can probably tell just one picture. This is Tsuge Tarao. So famed for like a cult star in the Gekiga scene. He was born in 1941 and is still alive and still is making manga. So his most recent manga was published only just a couple of years ago. That being this one over here i have shown this off on the channel before in a recent manga haul but this was only just published in 2020 so still making works right now i believe he is working or he owns a jeans shop and is running that while drawing manga on the side it's amazing stuff uh you know it's, has appeared in Gara a lot. I love his works. Uh, you no, know, he's like if you you're into like alt manga, gekiga that sort of stuff. Look at his works. He's got two things published in English. One is Slum Wolf. The other is Trash Market. Trash Market is very well. It's well known because of uh, the story that is related to his work when he was working in the blood bank. So love that stuff. And the story we have here is titled Sound, and this one appears uh, appears in Slum Wolf. And we get the character, we follow the character Ryokichi, forgot his last name, sort of going through, going through it really, um, having a lot of like existential stuff, kind of goes insane in this. I love the shadowing, especially in this story. So there's a specific panel as well, which is like 
crazy. But very fitting that they chose this story for the avant-garde collection. Very much a more surreal type of work from him. Yeah, I'll show you as well after there's like a, I think the cover is here. Yeah, this is the cover image for Slumwolf. And Slumwolf has it in, in orange. Always love the facial expressions of his characters too. Yeah, this one. That's a harrowing face. Yeah, so just that one chapter, but I'll show what the what slum look uh, slum slum wolf looks like. Here's the the cover of Slum Wolf, published by Drawing Quarterly, and that's the image there that we just saw. So, Slum Wolf. Yeah, Yokichi Algishi was his name. Sounds. There you go. Sounds is the um the story that we just looked at. All right, cool. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Still got a couple of different artists in mind that had to show up. This person here, oh, it's quite an interesting um, person to research. So their name is Tsuji Makoto. Tsuji Makoto, born in 1913, passed away, uh, or was he uh, committed suicide in 1975? And what uh, we have in this Yendai volume is just the one work, but it's a collection of different things. It's titled Insect, uh, I think, Insect Illustrations. Here's some info about him. But what is really interesting is that, well, he was a mountaineer, so uh, he also was a designer, a poet, illustrator, and in terms of his personal life, it was quite tragic. So he moved to France when he was 15, um, and his father. His, I was looking at his uh, on the Japanese Wikipedia because I was trying to find something. His father's name was Tsuji Jun, who was a key figure of the Japanese Dadaism movement, uh, who was found starved to death in his apartment, I think at age 60. Not entirely sure why he starved to death, if it was like an intentional thing. I'm not entirely sure. Couldn't really understand. Uh, but his mother was, her name was It. Ito Noe, and she was a women's liberation activist who was murdered in the Amakasu incident. Forgot when that occurred exactly, but uh, it was essentially like a brutal murder by like a military police captain who took her and her family, murdered them and threw them into a well. And it was a an incident that represented the sort of um, the corruption and the the, the fucked up shit that uh, happened under like martial law or the, the what's the word exploitation done by police at that time so really tragic um, sort of lives of his parents and um, for him himself he had hanged himself at a certain age too um, so it, yeah quite tragic so that's the background of Tsuji Makoto. In this uh, volume here, we have a couple of different caricatures, essentially. It's very interesting. So pretty much the, the story is titled or, um, Insect Illustrations, and each insect is given a name. So this insect's name is called uh, Public Opinion. It's pretty much just like caricatures satire. This one's called Public Opinion. This one on the right is called Defense. On the left, Patriotism. <clears throat> on the right, Happiness. On the left, Education. I like that one. Over here we have Envy. And on the left we've got Absolute, just named Absolute. Next one is called Inferiority Complex. 
left is religion. On the right is called, uh, <coughs> sorry, my voice. Uh, it's called authority. And on the left, this insect is, what is it, policy. Over here, we've got one called avant garde. And on the left, we've got PR, like public relations. And last but not least, this one is called contract. This one's one of my favorites as well, easy to understand. But yeah, pretty much just like a, a, a jab at institutions, a, a funny sort of a satire of different concepts like police, sorry, a policy, authority, patriotism, all that type of stuff. So very interesting, but very tragic in terms of, the, you know, his life and his parents' lives, that sort of stuff. But yeah. All right, we'll move on to next person, Nakamura Hiroshi. Got a couple of works here. So I will talk about Nakamura a little bit while flicking through one of the... I only have one. Where'd it go? Oh, I only had one uh, art book by him so far. This one here is called Drawing Uprising, collection of works. And so Nakamura Hiroshi is, was born in 1932 and he's still alive. Yeah, he is still alive. Um, and he's known for his very surreal war-related works, his signature style, or like, I guess subject matter would be girls mixed with trains, very industrial things. So for example, uh, he likes to do a lot of uh, industrial drawings as well, like trains, planes, very political, like these Cyclops girls. Oh, a very interesting, a very unique subject matter and um and like combinations of visual imagery i love his stuff I, I need to get more definitely um so he i think early on from my research he did uh some stuff that was uh classified as reportage painting so it was a post-war art movement started in 19 early 1950s that pretty much went against uh, or criticized the American military presence in Japan at that time. And his most well-known work or one iconic work from him uh, was called Sunagawa Number no. 5. And it's like a real realism painting that uh, depicts uh, authorities or police fighting against protesters like women, children, and men and all that type of stuff. But there was a shift in his works from realistic or, or realism to more of the surreal stuff that we see right now in this book here uh, with all of the, the girls, the cyclops girls, the, the trains, the planes, the, the blueprints of things. So interesting. Uh, but it was sort of related to, you know, the, the outcome of the Ampo, Ampo protests, like the university protests as well. Um, the outcomes of those and that influenced the shift from his works in realism to the stuff that we see now very much still politically motivated but um, just in a different way uh, I bet you've never seen like a what was that, that was an interesting one it was like a plane with an ass yeah planes with asses really weird stuff uh, and also, like a fun fact as well, he was one of the witnesses in Akasagawa Genpei's uh, Model 1000 Yen Note incident. So he was one of the people testifying. And this work on the left here was the one that was shown at the start of the Gendai issue in the comic, uh, in the color works. So yeah, great stuff. Pick up one of his art books if you can. Um, and let's go back to... Again, though, lighting might have changed because it's in the morning right now and the sun has, is going crazy, so I can't tell if it's screwing up the lighting or not. 
But we have a couple of things. Um, the first one is titled Complete Picture of the Vehicle. Can't get enough of this stuff, so you... We saw some of this stuff in, in that Drawing Uprising art book, but you've got your Cyclops Girl Train Plane Vehicle Hybrid things. Got a hybrid with like a, a boat or a ship. Got one with a tank as well. Um, and then I think, yeah, so these ones are different uh, works that he made for the Asahi Journal. Which, no, 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 I'm, I'm not too entirely sure what the Asahi Journal is, but this is one of my favorite works from him, 100%, this one here. It's like the looming, what is that? Is that the, I forgot the name of that, the really weird, the, the thing you paint one eye uh, for and you like make a wish or something and then you paint the other, I forgot the name of that. Um, and you've got like these two, like that. A knife here and a soldier or officer. Love that work so much. So yeah, these were made uh, for the Asahi Journal. And this last one is just titled Marx. Marx. So there you go. Great, great stuff from him. Love his, his style. Super unique, super uh, distinct. Okay, so moving on. We've got the master, if you can tell just from this drawing. This is Hayashi Seichi. So, he was born in 1945, and he's still alive to this day. And uh, I think in... Where is it? Uh, I'll pull it out right now. Um, he is still... It's not drawing manga anymore, but uh, I was reading well, a couple months ago. This is the Axe Issue 152. This is the 25th Newcomer Award. And if you see here, he was one of the judges. So, this issue only came out in 2023. Um, so, he's still doing stuff with Axe. Who, uh, Axe is, if you didn't know, like a alternative manga magazine, sort of the spiritual successor of Garo. Uh, a lot of the different artists in Garo moved to Axe when it, uh, when it stopped as well. So, yeah, this one is titled Makaka Rock, which is in the now out of print. Red Red Rock, uh, English publication. <laughs> I love this panel as well. Um, sort of Mickey Mouse getting killed. In terms of the story, it's sort of hard to figure out what's going on, but it seems like this guy is like a crazed killer. I love the <laughs> it like changes style as well. Hayashi Seichi, one of the my favorite mangaka. Yekiga artist that I've discovered recently, or in the past year at least. He's known for sort of bringing pop art into manga. And uh, he used to work for Toy Animation as well. And his most well known work is, oh, look at that. It's such a good little drawing there. He uh, used to work for Toy Animation. And his most famous work was. Uh, red colored elegy, which I'll show later. That was the guy at the start. Um, yeah, this this guy is from the red colored elegy. Very iconic work back when it was made. Love his glasses. Makes him so much more crazy. Um, yeah, and then on the left we've got some the standalone illustrations. Beautiful stuff. And yeah, so I'll show now quickly show. I think have I shown Red Color Energy before? Probably briefly. Uh, another John and Quality release. Amazing color uh, on the cover. One of my favorite color combinations is watermelon, so red and green. So the red colored elegy, here is the back about Ichiro and Sachiko. A couple who is pretty much just trying to get by. And it is the very iconic Gekiga style. Very surreal as well. Love this panel. An amazing work. It's, you know, it's the most well-known work. So please try to find this if you are interested in Hayashi. In terms of his other stuff, he's had Red Rock that is out of print. 
Um, what else? What's the name? Gold Pollen, also out of print. Flowering Harbor, out of print. A lot of stuff out of print. So hopefully they do come in print soon. And got a, a very a very informative uh, essay by Ryan Holmberg at the back. Quite long as well. But yeah, pick this up if you're interested in Hayashi. I also have the um, special issue of Garu, which I haven't read yet. And I'll eventually do a video on here, just depending. I just realized we've been going for an hour. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is why, like I said before, it's going to be a long video. So much to talk about. And screw it. I can't be bothered doing two parts. We'll just do it all in one part. Okay, let me... Let me just flick. I printed my notes for this. There's so many things uh, I need to talk about. All right. Yes. All right. This person here. We've got two, three more artists. Taranori Yoko. So they are the famed graphic designer. Uh, they were born in 1936. Still alive. So they did graphic design. They painted, made prints. A lot of their works are psychedelic. Uh, they're pastiches as well. And. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure if you know your Japanese artists, then you probably know of Taranori Yoko. So they've, pretty much the work here that they have is titled Character Theory. And it's, I'm not sure if they're caric caricatures, they're more, each um, uh, sort of piece is based on a person. So this first one here is supposed to be Taro Okamoto. I'm not sure who they are, so I wrote a list of them. They're an avant-garde artist who did murals and sculptures. So Taro Okamoto. This one you probably recognize. These two are based on Yukio Mishima, a very well-known writer uh, who I am uh, slowly getting through his works. If you ever want to read uh, Mishima, read Confessions of a Mask. It's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Amazing book. These two are based on Ken Takakura, who I searched up was an actor and singer. So I don't know a lot of these people. I just had to search them up. So they're an actor and singer, Ken Takakura. This one is uh, Kenji Sawada, who was a singer and a vocalist for the band The Tigers. These two are based on Junko Fuji, also known as Junko Terashima, who was an actress. This here is on Jean-Luc Godard. Godard. I don't know much about directors, but they are a film director, probably very well known, but just that I can't pronounce their name and I've never seen anything from them. It's a really cool one though. Next is Sayuri Yoshinaga on the right, who is, oh god, uh, an actress, very well known actress. And on the left, we've got a, t a piece titled Countries That Endorse Politics of Terror. Great stuff. And this right one here uh, is just titled um, Asahi Journal works. So different covers he, he's done for Asahi Journal. Yeah, and that was Taranori Yoko. Now we are on to our last two. So these are combined together. Uh, on the left, titled, uh, their name is Mad Amano. On the right, Sunehisa Kimura. So Mad Amano, which we start off with, is a photographer. He was born in 1929. Here are their summaries. Can't show the first one because it's nude photography. 1929, not sure if they're still alive now. Couldn't really find too much info about them. But they did photography and collages and parodies. So that's sort of like Frankenstein thing there. Yeah, mad image. And this says pornography. So, in the next, I don't know why they're put together. This is in the next page as well. Um, but... You've got Sunehisa Kimura next, who was born in 1928 and passed away in 2008. So they were a visual artist who did graphic design and a lot of photo montages as well. This one is a sort of like a story of a 
like a attack with like Coca Cola bottles. We saw that sort of with a Casago Genpe. Interesting. Torpedoes with who's who's the I forgot who like the face was of uh, face is of all of these. There's just like Japanese history. These photo montages as well. It's like pollution. I think this one's titled Pollution. Yeah, interesting stuff. Then you've got like, oh, this, this one's a great one. It's like a mix of a, a photo of Earth and like at least protesters, maybe? Something like that. And yeah, that is the end of the Gendai Manga Avant Garde Collection. So for anyone who's interested who can read Japanese, here is the back. So feel free to pause and read, but I haven't read this because it's just too long. I can't translate all this. So yeah, amazing stuff. Oh, this is such a great book. Thank you to Sean again for getting me this book. For anyone else, keep a lookout for this. If you've liked all the stuff here, great book to have, great book to have. So yeah, this is the second season. So there are other works, as I said before, of uh, other artists, uh, like pre-war manga as well. But yeah, that was the contemporary... No, wait, what was the full name of this again? Uh, it is... Uh, what's the full name? So the Gendai Manga Second Season Avant-Garde Manga 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 Masterpiece Collection published by Chikuma Shobo. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I enjoyed talking about uh, all of the manga, the artists, the photographers in here. I love this book so much. Um, definitely the longest video that I have recorded. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Bye.